Hi, Jeremy from the Artifacts Forge here with a quick video showing how to make a classic blueprint design with my latest product. The pack contains loads of useful resources including brushes, graphic styles, patterns and textures and I'll now explain how to use each of these. As you can see I'm starting my design with a blue gradient background and I'm going to add a realistic blueprint grid on top of it and I've already created a vector shape and I'm going to apply one of my patterns to it. And I do this by selecting the vector shape and then clicking on one of the icons from the swatches tab here. So, like so. And as you can see, I've supplied quite a few different types. And I think this one's one of my favorites, so I'm going to use that. Now, and I'm just going to turn the uh, black stroke off there. So we just have vector pattern. At the moment, the grid shows up a little bit too much and it might be a bit jarring uh, with your design on top of it. So I'm going to just adjust the opacity so that the grid is knocked out a little bit. The next step is to add a grid border around the edge of the design. And to do this, I'm going to duplicate the existing shape and paste it exactly on top. So I do this by selecting it, I'm going to edit, copy, then edit, paste in front, and then I'm going to adjust the opacity back up to 100%, and I'm going to knock the pattern out by clicking on none here for the fill. Now, to add the actual brush, I'm going to go to the brushes tab, and just click on this brush here, the blueprint border brush. As you can see, we now have a border around the edge. Now I think I'm going to adjust the opacity again to match the pan. The next thing I'm going to do is show you how to use one of the graphic styles. And to demonstrate it, I have a piece of text that I've pre-prepared here. And it's really simple. All I'm going to do is select that text, go to the graphic styles tab and click on one of the styles. And as you can see, it's really easy just to change and swap in different looks by clicking on different styles. I think I quite like this one, so I'll stick with that. Now it's worth noting at this stage that um, the graphic styles work much better with simpler text, so avoid overly complex fonts. If you want to upscale or downscale any of your text, simply go to Object, Transform and Scale. And in this new menu, make sure you've got Preview ticked. Type in the amount you'd like there and make sure you tick the scale strokes and effects here and transform patterns and just click OK. Next I'm going to add a little bit of extra detail uh, by using a number of the brushes. So I'm going to go back to the brushes tab and I'm going to select the line segment tool and holding on the shift key I'm going to draw a line. The shift key keeps your line horizontal. Uh, I'm just going to click here. And as you can see we have now have a measurement arrow here and there are a number of different ones so you can swap them in by just clicking on them. So I've got smaller dashes there or just a straight line there which I quite like. And now I'm going to do a vertical line here which I'm going to make the same and again I'm holding down the shift key. Um, I'll add a little bit of text, just a measurement in here. And let's make that white. Like so. 
I'm now going to show you how to add a few more subtle details using some of the brushes. And the first one, I'm going to add an ellipse here. And I'm going to take the bottom half of the ellipse off. And then I'm going to apply a brush to it. Now I think those dashes are a little bit far apart, so I'm going to pick another brush. That's perfect. And I'm going to add another line here. And on this one, I just want dashes with no arrows at the end, like so. And I'm going to select both of those and adjust the opacity. So we just have these subtle little details here. Before I add the final element, which is the realistic texture, I'm just going to knock the background grid and the border back a little bit more. So I'll adjust the opacity to 15%. There we go. It makes the text pop a bit more. And right, onto the texture. And you add this by selecting the File and Place menu. And selecting one of these two patterns here, I'll go for the creased one this time. And just clicking where you'd like it. Now I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees here. And I'll scale it very slightly. And then I'm going to adjust the opacity. First of all, I'm going to set it to multiply, which allows you to see everything beneath it. And then I'm going to adjust the opacity very slightly so it's more subtle and sits in the background. Like that. And there you have it, a finished blueprint design. Thanks for watching.